On the bench today is the Squire M80 Special. The Master Series M80 and M80 Special was designed by Fender Custom Shop Senior Master Builder Todd Krause. Todd joined Fender in 1991 and became a Custom Shop Master Builder in 1997. He's built custom guitars for famous artists such as Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton, Bob Dylan, David Gilmore, Robbie Robertson, Kenny Wayne Shepherd, Robin Trar, Roger Waters, and many others. There were two versions of the M80 guitar, the M80 and the M80 Special. The M80 was a higher priced set neck version of the guitar with nickel pickup covers. The guitar I have on the bench today is the M80 Special which has a bolt-on neck and exposed humbuckers. In Squire marketing literature, Todd Krause said about the M80, I've been working on the M80 for a long time. I designed it for somebody who was playing at a club, working with a label, or about to be signed. I wanted to build a working man's guitar for a new generation of players. That guitar evolved from many years of seeing things in guitars that I like or dislike. A lot of designs on that guitar are my gut level reaction to what I see people playing, my playing, and what players tell me they like and dislike or find comfortable and uncomfortable about a guitar. The body comes from a shortened Mustang guitar. If you put a longer scale neck on a Mustang, you have to shorten the body so it feels right. The M80 was made in Korea from 2005 to 2006. Here are some of the specifications of the guitar. The body is made of basswood, the neck is made of mahogany with a poly finish, and has a rosewood fretboard. It has a C-shape, 22 jumbo frets, 12 inch radius, nut width of 1.6875 inches, and a guitar scale length of 24.75. The guitar has a pickup configuration of humbucker humbucker. The pickups are two Duncan Design humbucking pickups. Duncan Design pickups started in 1995 and were designed by Seymour Duncan and built in Korea as well. They were only available to guitar manufacturers as OEM pickups or original equipment manufacturer and were never sold in the retail market to the public. They were seen as a name brand upgrade to guitars normally within the $300 to $1,000 price range. Squire sold these pickups in guitars for a number of years, most notably in the Squire Vintage Modified series. The controls on the guitar are very Gibson-like. You have three position toggle pickup selector switch that offers position one is bridge pickup, position two is bridge and neck pickups, and position three is neck pickup. The controls are simple and also Gibson-like. Volume one and tone one are the neck pickup, and volume two and tone two are for the bridge pickup. The guitar comes with an adjust omatic bridge and anchored tailpiece. Use the guitar goes for 221 to 368 for the special. For the M80 with set neck, I've seen the guitar go regularly in the $400 to $500 price range. I searched for the original MSRP manufactured suggested retail price and have yet to locate what the two models of guitars sold for new in 2005 to 2006. Some observations. I'm amazed that there's a Squire case. I've never seen one before. The case is really nice and very high quality. It is comparable to a Gibson case. I do not know if the guitar came with this case or if it was something that was purchased as an accessory. I really did not ever expect to handle a Fender slash Squire guitar with 3x3 tuners instead of 6 in line. I know that there are others, but I've not had my hands on one until now. The edges of the fretboard are very smooth. It looks almost like it was rolled. The tuners are sealed Squire tuners, but function really, really well. For now, I would not see a need to upgrade them. I found fret rocking in seven locations on the fretboard. I understand that this is a used guitar and actually almost 20 years old. I used my handy dandy Stumac fret kisser to file just the frets that needed to be attended to and not the frets on either side of the tall frets. The file uses the frets on either side of the tall fret as the guide for how much to remove a fret material. Once the fret kisser file stops, making the filing noise, you know that you're done. I then checked again for rocking and in all cases it was no longer there. Next I taped off both sides of the filed frets. I then used sandpaper to sand the filed fret surface to remove any file marks. This fret kisser is my new favorite tool. It makes fret maintenance fun and something I look forward to and not such an arduous task anymore. The electronics are most definitely an upgrade target. They are the normal Squire, low-cost type of electronics you find in all of the Squire line since the beginning until now. All cheaply made pots, switches, capacitors, and output jacks. The soldering and assembly work are well done though. The overall neck and body fit is amazingly well made, and 
the finishing job is superb. The basswood, particularly on the body, looks like a really nice walnut. The shape of the headstock is wild and very foreign to anything I have come to know to, or to expect from Fender or Squire for the most part. My guitar weighs 7 pounds and 2.8 ounces or 3.254 kilos. Measuring pickup impedance, the bridge humbucker measures 13.89k ohms. Both pickups together measure 4.96k ohms, and the neck humbucker measures 7.72k ohms. I was doing setup on the guitar and I was trying to lower my string height. I bottomed out the bridge and was not able to make any more adjustments, meaning I had turned the adjustment wheels on the bridge all the way down and I still needed to make more adjustments to get my string height to an appropriate lower height. As a result, my string height is much higher than I'm used to and it's a little bit challenging to play. I did read as I was scouring articles and forums doing research that some owners of the guitars have encountered neck angle issues and experienced the same problems of being able to adjust string height as me. After writing the first draft of this script and sleeping on it, I went out to the shop first thing in the morning and installed a shim. It took care of the adjustment issue. I now though have found that the high E string slot on the nut is cut too low and I need to replace the knot, peeling the layers of an onion as you fix one thing you find something else. I really do like the stock Duncan design pickups. I didn't think that I would. I've had them in a lot of different guitars and they've been hit or miss. Sometimes they're really good, sometimes they're not. They're actually pretty solid sounding. Full range of low, medium, and highs. If you can find this guitar in the market for sale and get it for what I paid for mine, I'd buy it. It would be a very fun little guitar to mod, upgrade, and play. Very solid. I only paid $275 and that included the case. Mm -hmm.